We took readings earlier on four cars. I'm now going to just kind of write out a basic rail car calculation if you don't already have one. I strongly encourage you to check your rail car calculations. They do send to BOL and they do, they're as accurate as they are. But from my point of view, I don't trust anybody. I want to double check because I see and I'm painfully aware of my shortcomings as a human being. I make mistakes. I transpose numbers. I imagine that the human beings that load my cars do the same thing. And you'll find from time to time, cars will be severely overfilled from what the BOL says and sometimes severely underfilled. And I trust them to give me an accurate enough BOL, but I never trust anybody that whatever they send me is the gospel truth if I have the means to verify it. So that's what we do. We just want to do a basic verification. So we did car GATX 204 511. We got off the side there, its water capacity was 33,641. We took a outage to measure how big the vapor space was in the car, and that came to 22.25 inches. In order to find what this translates to into gallons, for a GATX car, you go to a GATX rail, and then you find the gauge tables. Go to the gauge table, and you put in GATX, you put in that. And when you do, you come up that it says that equals out to 4,281 gallons. Next thing we did is we took our temperature, and it's 52 degrees. I have a, and you can find them, Berquist has them, gas equipment has them, others have them, you can find a thermodynamic chart for propane. And when you look that chart up at 52 degrees, it says propane should have a pressure of 79 pounds. When we took our actual reading on the car, we came up with 100 pounds, 21 pounds. We're in the ballpark. The rough rule of thumb is about 50 pounds. So if your difference here is more than 50 pounds, stop, figure out what the problem is, and have your whoever sent you the car have them go and try to figure out why you got such a discrepancy, but that's just not right. Now that we have this, we have to figure a temperature correction for this. And there's a chart, NFPA 58, Annex F as in Frank. There's a chart, F.3.3. .3. And there in that chart, hold on just a second, I'm going to go grab that chart in the book and I'll show you the book. Table F.3.3. Specific gravity, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, is declaring propane at a specific gravity of 0 0.5079. So we'll follow this chart going down here. We come over here, find 52 degrees, come over here, we get a correction factor of 1.013. So we'll use that. So, temperature correction, factor 1.013. Now we're going to just do some basic math. So we're going to take our water capacity 33,641 minus 4281 leaves us with 29,000 360. Now we take 29,360 times 
1.013, we get 29,742. That's what this rough calculation says, how many net gallons there should be. Now that we have that number, we go to the next number. What did that refinery say that we had on our BOL? They declared our net gallons to be 29,000, so we're going to minus 29,813. So we have a loss of 71 gallons. We are allowed, as a rule of thumb, you're allowed to, you have to be more than 2%. Your loss has to be greater than 2% before anybody will care. So roughly, you'd have to be short at least 600 gallons before anybody would care. I have my company uses a proprietary rail car, rail car calculation sheet. I ran all of these numbers through my calculation sheet. I came up with a net of 29,939. So when I minus out what the BOL says, 29,813, I have a plus of 126 gallons. That's a difference of 197 gallons on doing it. This is a good number. This tells you right off the bat, you're close. You're really good. I have had cars come in. The worst car I can remember coming in was short 1740 gallons going the other way I had one car come in and it was overfilled around 800 gallons needless to say I reported both of them when you got into excess swinging one way or the other you document it and you report it so this is this is the most accurate number this is a really good number Ours calculates some other factors in here that if you want to go do the math and start asking around, you can find the math formulas to, to plug in and get a more accurate number. But I strongly suggest that you always do a basic rail car calculation so that you know. Because if you're off, you know, it's nothing to be off 300 gallons at a time. If you're consistently off 300 gallons at a time, you do 10 cars and each car is off 300 gallons, you're now 3,000 gallons off. So if you rely only on the BOLs, you're really going to start showing a loss. But if we already know there's a loss, we can adjust our inventory accordingly. So I encourage you, uh, you don't have to buy NFPA 58 to get the chart. You can find it on uh, different websites. There's others that have what they consider more accurate chart number. If you want to, you can try to. I'm not going to do it, but you can try to figure out a more accurate way to measure the vapor space, the actual gallons in the vapor space. But like I said, basic rail car calculation is your really good number. I encourage you to do it. That way you always have a good reference. You always have a good understanding of what you are actually offloading, not what they're telling you you are offloading. Thank you.